After the appropriate time, the splint must be safely removed. The purpose of the splint was to stabilize the teeth, allowing time for the periodontal ligament damage or fracture to repair or stabilize. We must be careful not to splint the teeth for too long. Detailed information regarding splinting times can be found in the International Association for Dental Traumatology Guidelines. This video demonstrates two different methods of how to remove a composite and wire splint. We have previously created videos which demonstrate how to place the composite and wire splint following different types of traumatic dental injuries. We would advise you to review guidelines, in particular the International Association of Dental Traumatology guidelines when deciding how to manage traumatic dental injuries. The first method we will show you in this video utilizes an orthodontic Devon burr in order to remove any composite from the wire splint. The second method we will demonstrate involves using orthodontic bracket removers to quickly and efficiently remove the composite, fixing the splint to the teeth. Use a slow speed rotary instrument and a tungsten carbide orthodontic debonding burr to remove the composite attached to the traumatized tooth first. Alternatively, composite finishing burrs can be used. If composite finishing burrs are being used with a high speed rotary instrument, water must always be used to avoid excessive heat generation. Whichever burr choice you use, care must be taken to ensure that the tooth surface is not damaged during the debonding process. Use minimal pressure and carefully allow the burrs to grind the composite. Regularly check your progress with composite removal. Once the traumatized tooth is debonded, the splint will still be attached to the mesial and distal abutment teeth. It is now time to assess the mobility of the previously traumatized tooth. With only the traumatized tooth separated from the splint, assess its degree of mobility. If the tooth has excessive mobility, composite can easily be reattached to rebond the tooth to the splint, and the splint can be left in situ for a little longer. The decision on whether to keep the splint on for longer must not be taken lightly and will also depend on the nature of the injury. If it is still mobile, further investigation and onward referral is usually required. If the traumatized tooth is stable, remove the composite now from one of the abutment teeth. Before removing the composite from the final abutment tooth, it should be firmly held with a locking instrument, such as a Spencer Wells forceps. Aspiration risk can be further mitigated by protecting the airway with gauze. The patient can also be positioned sitting upright. Now safely lift the splint entirely away from the teeth and dispose of it in the sharps bin. There may be residual composite remaining on the teeth. Use composite finishing or orthodontic debonding burrs to remove this residual composite from the teeth. Again, taking care not to damage the labial surface of the teeth below. Our second technique of splint removal involves the use of orthodontic bracket removers. Similar to method one, release the composite first from the traumatized tooth and assess its mobility. To remove the composite in this method, 
we use the orthodontic bracket removers in a similar way as you would when removing brackets during a debond process. If the tooth is excessively mobile, as previously discussed, we can reevaluate the situation and treatment plan accordingly. Use the bracket removers to then debond one of the abutment teeth. Before debonding the final abutment tooth, ensure that the splint is firmly grasped with a locking instrument. The airway can also be protected with gauze and the patient could be sat in an upright position at this time. Use the bracket removers now to then debond the last abutment tooth and safely discard of the splint in the sharp spin. Any residual composite should then be removed with composite finishing or orthodontic debonding burrs. Again, taking care not to damage the underlying tooth surface.